The following video shows the removal, repair, and reinstallation of a Caden Johnson Core Pro rotary joint and stationary siphon. The use of a Caden Johnson Genuine Part Repair Kit is strongly recommended. Contact your Caden Johnson representative to order the appropriate kit. Follow your company's safety procedures whenever working on Caden Johnson products and refer to the Caden Johnson written repair instructions for more detailed information. We will now begin with the removal of the rotary joint. Release residual pressure in the system and then disconnect the inlet and outlet piping from the rotary joint. Make sure the siphon adjusting screw is tight. This will prevent adjusting the siphon after the rotary joint is rebuilt. Loosen the horizontal support tube nut approximately two turns and give it a sharp hit with a hammer. This will disengage the horizontal support tube. Remove the following parts, head bolts, spring washers, head retaining ring, support tube nut, cup seal, head, second cup seal. Discard the cup seals and spring washers. Pull the support tube toward you as far as it will go. Let the support tube rest. Leave it in this position and work around it. Remove the nuts that secure the body to the ring bracket or bearing retainer. While this is being done, the body will push away from the ring bracket. Remove the body by sliding it over the support tube, then remove the seal ring. We have now successfully removed the Core Pro rotary joint. We will now repair the rotary joint. Inspect the sealing surface of the wear plate. If it is worn, scored, steam cut, or otherwise damaged, it must be replaced. Do so by removing the bolts that fasten the wear plate to the journal. Clean the mating surface of the journal. Apply Never Seize to the bolts. Refer to the assembly drawing for proper torque. Install a new gasket or O-ring and reattach the wear plate. Then tighten the bolts evenly using a star pattern. The wear plate, gasket, and O-ring are not part of the repair kit, but can be purchased separately. Place the body and nipple assembly into a press with the flat face of the nipple facing up and place a block on the flat face of the nipple to protect it. Use caution as there is a spring force present. Push the nipple into the body and remove the retaining ring. As the press is released, the spring force will push the nipple out of the body most of the way. Once the spring force is relaxed, separate the nipple from the body. Remove the nipple, energized seal, and spring. Clean the body using solvent and a Scotch-Brite pad. Once clean, inspect the bore where the cup seal rides, inlet connection, and groove pins. If any area is worn or steam cut, the body should be replaced. The body is not part of the repair kit, but may be purchased separately. Clean the nipple using a Scotch-Brite pad and solvent. Inspect the energized seal groove for wear, scoring, or steam cuts. Inspect the flat-faced sealing area of the nipple for wear, scoring, or steam cuts. If any surface is damaged, the nipple must be replaced. The nipple is not part of the repair kit, but may be purchased separately. Inspect the anti-rotation pins for wear. After cleaning and inspecting the nipple, Install a new energized seal onto the nipple with the cup or U-shaped portion facing the end of the nipple. Inspect the springs. The free length should be no less than 1 and 3 quarter inches or 45 millimeters. Replace the springs if they are too short or damaged. Place the body back into the press with the body flange facing up. Install springs into the spring guide holes. Lubricate the cup seal and bore of the body using only the silicone lubricant supplied in the repair kit. Then, place the nipple with the energized seal into the body and guide into position with the press aligning the groove pins with the appropriate holes. Install a new retaining ring and release the press. Make sure the lip of the energized seal did not fold during this operation. The energized seal can be viewed from the back side of the body to make sure it is not folded. 
If the energized seal is damaged during installation, replace it with a new one. Do not reuse the damaged part. Clean and inspect the head for wear, steam cuts, or pitting. If any surface is damaged, the head must be replaced. The head is not part of the repair kit, but can be purchased separately. Inspect where the body cup seal wears. Inspect the keyways. Turn the head over and clean and inspect the cup seal groove. We have now successfully repaired the Core Pro rotary joint. We will now begin the reinstallation. Lubricate studs of the ring bracket with Never Seize. Then place three drops of seal ring installation fluid equally spaced on the spherical face of the seal ring. The installation fluid will allow the seal ring to stick to the wear plate long enough to install the body. Place the seal ring onto the wear plate, making sure that it is centered. Use caution to make sure the seal ring does not fall from the wear plate. Place the body assembly over the support tube and up to the bracket or bearing retainer, making sure that the nipple inside of the body lines up with the flat face of the seal ring. Line up the holes in the body with the studs on the bracket. Make sure that the inlet connection is in the desired orientation. Then, fasten the body to the bracket. Tighten fasteners in a star pattern to 120 foot-pounds or 163 newton meters. With the rotary joint body installed, check that the seal ring wear indicator is in the full green position. This indicates the amount of seal ring wear life remaining at room temperature. Next, make sure the groove for the cup seal is clean. Lubricate a new cup seal using only the O-ring lubricant provided in the repair kit and install it in the groove. Apply Never Seize to the tapered portion of the support tube. Orient the outlet connection in the desired position and slide the head over the horizontal support tube, making sure that the key on the pipe engages the groove in the head. Clean the cup seal groove of the head Apply O-ring lubricant and install the second cup seal. Apply Never Seize to the support tube nut threads and install into the end of the support tube. Do not fully tighten the nut at this time. Apply Never Seize and install the retaining ring bolts into the head retaining ring. Then slide the new spring washers over the retaining ring bolts. Make sure that the washer is installed with the cone facing the ring. Next, install the retaining ring in a manner so that the head is sitting on the adjusting screw. Tighten the retaining ring bolts to 30 to 42 foot-pounds or 41 to 57 newton meters and the support tube nut to 175 to 200 foot-pounds or 237 to 271 newton meters. Turn the roll to make sure the siphon is not touching the shell. If it is, loosen the retaining ring bolts that secure the head and turn the adjusting screw to raise the siphon. The maximum adjustment is a quarter inch or six millimeters. When finished, make sure all fasteners are tightened. Reattach the inlet and outlet piping. You have now successfully completed the removal, repair, and reinstallation of a Core Pro rotary joint and stationary siphon. For further questions, refer to the written repair instructions or contact your Caden Johnson representative.